The disk drives in a computer are controlled by an adapter card. Like other components, the adapter card can fail. In this section, we'll show you how to replace the disk drive adapter card. The only tool you'll need is a screwdriver, either straight or Phillips head, or a nut driver. Different computer manufacturers use various types of fasteners, so it's important that you have a variety of tools on hand. You must be certain you have chosen an adapter card that is compatible with your disk drives. You can refer to the study unit about disk drives for a discussion of adapter drive compatibility. The first step is to open the system unit to gain access to the motherboard. This procedure is covered in section 3 of this video, so we won't repeat it here. If you feel it's necessary, review section 3 now. Look at the existing adapter card and drives. Draw a diagram so you understand how the connector cables are oriented. You'll find your job is much easier if you disconnect only the ribbon cable from the old adapter card and leave the cables connected to the drives. Use a felt tip pen to mark the top of the old adapter card. This will prevent you from confusing it with the new adapter card. You should also mark the top of the connector cable so you can plug it into the new adapter correctly. It wouldn't hurt to note the slot into which the adapter card is plugged. Remove the retaining screw from the existing drive adapter card. Put the screw in a safe place. Remove the adapter card from the slot by pulling up while rocking slightly. Look at the new adapter card. Find the connector for the ribbon cable. You'll see that the connector has numbers to indicate where pins 1 and 2 of the cable should go. Insert the card in the adapter slot. Refer to your diagram if necessary to identify the correct slot. Secure it with the screw you removed from the old adapter card. You shouldn't have to worry about matching pin 1 on the cable and connector because you mark the cable to show which direction is up. Plug the ribbon cable into the adapter card. Be sure the part of the cable you marked is pointing up. Double check by looking for the odd colored wire on the ribbon connector. This wire should be connected to pin 1 on the adapter card. After you've connected the ribbon cable to the adapter card, you'll have to arrange the cable so it doesn't interfere with the flow of air through the computer. Handle the cable gently so you don't damage it. There's no hard and fast rule to guide you, so you'll have to use your best judgment. The important thing is to allow air to flow through the computer so it can cool the components. Before you close up, check the ribbon cable one more time. Is the mark you made on top? Is pin 1 on the cable connected to pin 1 on the adapter card? If everything seems correct, replace the system unit case. When you install a new disk drive controller card, you'll probably have to perform a low-level format on the disk. We discussed this in the study unit dealing with disk drives. Because of the way they're constructed and used, printers develop problems more often than most other components of a computer system. In this section, we'll discuss some of the most frequent troubleshooting situations. As is true with most other troubleshooting procedures, be sure the printer is unplugged when you work on it. This is especially important if you are going to troubleshoot electronic components rather than just the mechanical components. The first topic we'll discuss is routine maintenance. Take a look inside the printer. If there's a buildup of dirt or paper dust, remove it with a small vacuum cleaner or canned air. If the print head rail has become dirty, wipe it clean with a soft cloth, but don't oil it. Most mechanical printer problems can be traced to a buildup of dirt or paper dust. If you're working with a dot matrix printer, be sure the roller is clean, the gears are aligned correctly, and the paper path is free of debris. On a laser printer, be sure the rollers and pads are clean and that the toner cartridge is still usable. As part of the routine maintenance procedure, run the printer self-test. The manual will tell you how to do this. You might also want to do a print screen to check the printer. If a problem arises with a printer, the first place to look is the cabling and switches. Is everything plugged in and turned on? Is the printer online? Are dip switches set correctly? 
Is the ribbon still serviceable? Or is the darkness adjusted correctly? Next, check the software. The software controlling the printer must be correct. This software includes the AutoExec BAT and the Config Sys. There might also be setup software that came with the printer. The printer drivers for individual applications must also be installed on the system. The printer must be attached to the right connector or it won't work. Check the connector and ensure that the cable is seated correctly. You should also examine the cable closely. Many printer problems are caused by users who've adjusted certain settings and failed to return them to the normal setting. These settings can be either software or hardware adjusted. Remember one of the important rules of troubleshooting and assume nothing. Check all the hardware and software settings yourself. Printer problems often occur in the paper path. In an impact printer, you can often remove the platen and other mechanical parts, clean the paper path, and reinstall the parts. It's not a good idea to disassemble a laser printer because it's difficult to reassemble. Moreover, if any parts have to be replaced, you may have a hard time obtaining them from the manufacturer. If the adapter card for a printer is faulty, the power on self-test will generate an error message. Post does not test the printer cable. Before replacing the adapter, you might want to test the continuity of the cable with a multimeter. If the cable is intact, you'll have to replace the adapter. A frequent laser printer problem is the timeout error. This is caused by printing a document that exceeds the memory capacity of the printer. You can modify the document. Perhaps by using fewer fonts, you might be able to work around the problem. Otherwise, if the problem happens often, you'll have to add more memory to the printer. Printers are the workhorses of a computer system, and they play an important role for any user. By following the troubleshooting procedures we recommend, you can keep a printer running at peak performance.